Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a statement about his message and mission. And he said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ He said, I was exclusively sent to you to fulfill and complete good manners. This is a comprehensive goal of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mission. Everything the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, all the instructions and the guidelines and the rules, came for the purpose of fulfilling a very important task, which is teaching, educating, completing the good manners among the people. Which means that the Prophet ﷺ did not come to demolish, delete, or wipe out the things that was before him, the things that were before him. Rather, he came to rectify some of the wrong understandings. He came to fix some of the wrong behaviors. He came to bring good things, but also whatever was good before him, he did not want to delete it. He came to fulfill it, perfect it, and even emphasize on it. Good manners are one of the three things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said among the purposes of the Prophet Sallallahu message. When three times in the Quran, he mentioned this exact verse in the same exact order. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that messenger to you so he can recite the book of Allah, the recite the verses of Allah to you, so he can purify you and then to teach you the book and the wisdom. Purification or tazkiyah, one of the forms of it is to emphasize on good manners or good akhlaq. And this is what our religion is always talking about. There is a good balance between worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having good manners when you're dealing with others. Akhlaqun wa ibadat. These are the two components, the main two components of the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if you practice ibadat, you worship Allah, but at the same time you have bad manners, you are not doing it right. You're actually giving a bad image about Islam. You are making people run away from faith when you are praying and fasting and reading Quran, but at the same time you're lying and cheating and doing all the wrong things when you're dealing with others. On the other hand, doing good manners, having good manners without good ibadat, without worshiping Allah properly, you are not being fair. You're not being right towards your God, your creator. So we always need them both, akhlaq and ibadat good manners, and good acts of worship towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the good manners that our religion came to talk about, a manner that's called al-wafa. Al-wafa is one of the beautiful things that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced in his life, and he called people to practice as well. Wafa could have two meanings. One of them is to fulfill your promise and agreements and contracts. That's one part of wafa. But my khutbah today will focus on the other part, which is loyalty, faithfulness, being grateful to those who did good to you in your past and you treat them in a good way. You don't forget the goodness that people did to you in your past. You don't forget those who supported you. You don't forget those who loved you. You don't forget those who helped you when you needed help. And you find yourself it, you find it hard on yourself to forget those things and you find it always you're trying to pay them back. You're always trying to treat them well because of the things they did to you in the past. And if they did something wrong to you, you will forgive them because of all the good things they've done to you in your past. That is wafa. That is the manner that we'll be talking about today. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna khiyara ibadillah al tayyibun. The best among the people are those who are loyal and faithful and they're good and kind at the same time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised several prophets in the Quran with this beautiful manner. For example, he said, Wa Ibrahim alladhi wafa. Now, if we want to learn how to practice this manner, this wafa, we should learn from the best, from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet gave so many good examples about this beautiful trade, al-wafa, with his companions, with his friends, even with his own enemies. You know, one of the people of Mecca who fought the Prophet 
did something good to the Prophet once. His name is Al-Mut'am ibn Uday. He stood and protected the Prophet Sallallahu and his family from injustice that was taking place. Later on, after the death of this man, the Prophet Sallallahu said a very nice statement. He said, by Allah, if Mut'am asked me to do this, which is freeing some of the prisoners of war, I would have listened and obeyed his request. The Prophet ﷺ gave a great and many great examples of how to practice wafa and how to be loyal, faithful, grateful to those who did good to you in, their, in his past. And especially with women in his life. I'll share with you three stories about important women in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And I want you to, to, to feel it. I want you to put yourself in the companionship of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was saying and doing these things. And I want you to feel the feeling that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was having when he said and did these things. Number one, one day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was traveling with the companions from one town to another during one of the expeditions or the battle. And they reached an area that was empty, like a rural area. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have to do something. So he went and visited a grave. And the companions are with him. And then he stood there and he started crying. They said, what's going on? Who's this grave? He said, this is the grave of Amina, the mother of Muhammad. Now try to think about it. The Prophet ﷺ was six years old when he was traveling back from Yathrib. Him and his mother and her assistant, a woman. And they had to stop at a spot where she got so ill and she died in front of his eyes. What a sad moment for a six-year-old kid, seeing his mother dying in front of him and having to help burying her. 50 years later, the Prophet ﷺ stops in front of her grave and cries. And they will say, why are you crying? He said, I remembered her kindness. I remembered her softness, my beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's an example. Another example. We all know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, during the first four years of his life, or between the age of two and six, he lived with a woman named Halima Saadiyya, who was breastfeeding him, taking care of him, raising him up away from his family in the wilderness. And the Prophet ate from her household, played with her children, and he lived in her household for four years. After he left her tribe, he never got to meet her again, and she died. But at, after the liberation of a Ta'if and the conquer of Ta'if, a woman came to the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and she said, I am the sister of Muhammad. He, they said, she, he doesn't have any sisters. She said, let me meet him. So she went and met him and stood before him and she asked him, do you remember who I am? Do you know who I am? Do you recognize me? He said, no. He said, I am Ash-Shayma, your sister from Halima. He said, how do I know what you're saying is true? She said, do you remember one day when you were three or four years old, I was carrying you and you bit me on my shoulder and the mark is still there. He said, yes, I remember. And the, cheer and the joy and the smile on his face, yes, you are my sister. And he guessed or given her gifts and he took off his robe and said, sit down, let's sit down and, and, and remember. And he started asking what happened to so-and-so and what happened to so-and-so. And then he said, I'll give you the choice. Either you stay with me, honored, part of my family, or you go back to your family, also honored. She said, no, I want to go back to my family. He said, here, all these gifts are for you. I said, what appreciation for your mother and what she's done to me. The best form of wafa and appreciation is what the Prophet ﷺ expressed towards his wife, Khadija. The Prophet ﷺ loved Khadija so much. And he always talked about how much he loved her, even after she died. She was his only wife during his, her life. And later on in life, several occasions that showed how much he had loyalty, faithfulness towards her. One day the Prophet ﷺ was sitting and he heard Someone talking, he said, this is the voice of Khadija. And he got up and he found it was her sister, Hala. And he honored her and he sat down and he talked, up, talk, talked to her. One day after the liberation of Mecca, the Prophet ﷺ left everybody and he was 
he was seen sitting down on the floor with an old woman. And he spent hours talking to her. Aisha radiallahu anha later on asked him, who was that woman? He said, that was the friend of Khadija. We were just remembering the days of Khadija. Now Aisha got jealous. And she said, you still remember that old woman? And Allah had given you a better wife? Look at the answer. He said, la wallah. No, by Allah, he did not give me. He did not replace me with a better wife. She believed me when everyone denied me. She supported me when everyone fought against me. She was the financial support, the emotional support that I needed during my early days. I lived with her for 25 years, full of love and happiness. I will never forget Khadija. That is the loyalty that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam expressed not only with these three women, but also with everyone who did something good to him, to him in his life. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to make us learn the history and the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam properly and apply those lessons in our lives. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه فيا فوز المستغفرين استغفر الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسوله أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى تابعيهم ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين We started khutbah talking about the manners of Islam and specifically the manner or the khuluq of wafa loyalty, faithfulness, grateful to those who did good to you in your past and always remembering those who did this, who helped you, supported you or loved you in your life so what do we, how do we, and whom do we practice this khuluq with? I'll give you a few suggestions or reminders about whom, who deserves our wafa, our loyalty, and our appreciation for the things they've done to us in our lives. And I'm sure you can remember or add many more to this list. The first one that we need to practice wafa with is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask yourself how many times you've been through difficult days and you raise your hands and you made dua and shortly after the answer came. Do you remember if you're an immigrant when you migrated to this country? Many people will say I migrated with this, this amount of money in my pocket. It was so difficult. I had to find these jobs and these jobs. I had to have roommates. And then look at you, mashallah. You have a big business, big house. Do you express appreciation to Allah for that blessing and that giving? If you are, do you remember when you graduated from college and you were looking for a job and you're not able to do it? And now, mashallah, Allah blessed you with a good life. Do you still express appreciation and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So how do I do that? Number one, never forget. Never forget the things that Allah have done to you and given you. Never forget and don't ever say, I am successful because I'm smart or intelligent. There are so many people who are smart and intelligent around the world, much more than you and me, and they're poor and live in poverty. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave you everything that you have. It's Allah who gave you your intelligence and your smartness. So be grateful and appreciative for the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. So don't forget. Number two, do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the blessings that he gave you with the money that he gave you, with the health that he gave you, with the good looks that he gave you. Don't use those blessings to do things that Allah would not be happy with. And finally, always be grateful and worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a sign of appreciation. A lot of people look at salah, the five daily prayers, as an obligatory burden. Look at it as a way to express appreciation to Allah's blessings to you. As a way to say, thank you, ya Allah, for everything that you've given me. Look at everything that you do to worship Allah as a way to say thank you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't forget, be grateful and have loyalty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are living your daily lives. The second on the list, our parents. Our parents have done so much to us. We should express wafa 
we should express appreciation and loyalty to them and remember the hard days that they've done and they went through because of us. The nights that your mother stayed up because you had a fever. The hard working days that your dad had to go through to bring food to the table. When they're older, when they need your help, that's when you express loyalty, appreciation. When they need your help, when they go to the doctors, when they need your help to stay somewhere, that's when you, it shows your wafa to them. And after they leave this world, doing good things on their behalf, paying tzadaqah on their behalf, making dua to them, visiting their friends and their relatives, that's one of the signs of wafa that the Prophet wasallam taught us to do towards our parents, to our spouses, to your wives, brothers, and to your husbands, sisters. Let's not forget the good days that they stood with us. The hard work that they did to build our family together. This whole khutbah was inspired by a janazah prayer that I just attended a few days ago. One of my dear friends and his children were in my youth group. His name is Brother Jamal. He passed away last week and I was attending his janazah. I knew that his wife passed away five years earlier. And one of his close friends told me, by the way, for the past five years, since his wife, Amal, passed away, he's been going to her grave every single Sunday making dua for her. This is the loyalty that I'm talking about between husbands and wives. On the other hand, I did a kitab the other day, and one of the widows were there. It's like, yeah, my turn is next. I'm looking for it, Mary. This is sad. Let us express loyalty. Let us express appreciation for those who lived with us for so long and many years, our spouses. Another group of people that we need to express appreciation and express gratefulness, to, to gratitude to them, our teachers. Every single person who taught me something, every single person who taught me something that made me a better person, I should always express appreciation to them. Make dua to them in my salah. Do you, do you think of your teachers? Do you think of your youth, youth, youth group advisor? Do you think of an imam who fixed your life? Do you think of some individual who helped you out in life? When you got your first job, was there a person, a senior employee who said, come here and help you? Do you remember the guy who you met when you first came to this country and said, here's my car, here's my house? Do you remember a mentor that you met in college that taught you how to do things in life? And now, ya mashaAllah, you're successful. Do you still remember these people? Wafa is to remember them. You make dua to them. You visit them. You stay in touch with them. You express gratitude for the things that they've done to you. Organizations or institutions that helped you. Do you still go and donate to your school that you went to when you were young? Do you go donate to the masjid that you were raised up? Many of you young people now in 20, 30 years, mashaAllah, you'll be successful people. And you remember these beautiful memories when you were youth and young kids in the masjid. Come back and give to the masjid the place that helped you to become a better person. This is wafa that we're talking about. And I'm sure you'll find many other examples, many other people in your life that you should always remember them and express this beautiful feeling and appreciation to them. Now, why is this important in the society? Why is this khuluq is important? Like we understand being honest and being truthful, it's good for transactions, makes, but why is wafa good? The positive and beautiful feeling that you will feel when you express appreciation to someone and you will make others feel when you express appreciation to them is needed in the community and the society. You know, if you pick up the phone and you call someone who helped you 20 years ago and say, you know what, Akhi, I never told you that but you made a huge impact on my life. You have made a huge impact on my personality. And I always pray for you. And I just want to tell you thank you again and again. You know how much joy you're going to bring to the person's heart? Not only that, you know how good you will feel? Try it. Wallahi, it feels so good. And go out of your way. Their wedding, their son's wedding, go and give a beautiful gift. Even if they live far away, imagine if you travel to a far distance and to, to meet a person who helped you 20, 30 years ago, just to say, thank you, I'm here to express appreciation. You will feel so good, and that person will feel so good. We need this positivity in the community and the society. If you feel gratitude towards anybody, 
Do not hide it. Go and share it and say it with others.